hair on the on the lens there. Anyway, well, that week did not go the way I was expecting it to. Uh, after uh, ending last week, uh, coming out of my night shift, you know, uh, emerging as I was, <laughs> as you saw in the snow, I was all like, oh yeah, this week, you know, but the week off, I'll go, I'll go out and I'll be walking around and we'll, we'll shoot some video and it'll be great. And, um, it turns out that th th this wound up being like the coldest week of the winter so far, <laughs> um, probably will wind up being the coldest week of this entire winter. Uh, so it wasn't actually really all that good of an idea to spend a bunch of time outside like I was planning to. And even if it wasn't, you know, horrendously cold, uh, it was always snowing or raining or whatever a lot of the days, so it wasn't even practical to go out much. Uh, so a lot of my plans for the week went by the wayside, completely. Uh, it does look like um, things are warming up now, and the week after this next set of nights, I'll be able to start doing more of the outdoorsy stuff that I was planning to do. But this week, that was kind of a non-starter. What I did manage to do was play a bunch of video games. I did also, you know, the usual I was watching TV and I watched Community, that sort of thing. Uh, but yes, I was planning to play some video games, as I said, and I did. Um, so that was the main thrust of the week. So let's talk about those video games. More than I was planning to, but we'll, we'll do that. That'll make up this video. That's what this is going to be. So, uh, let's start with um, Destruction All-Stars, which is one of the two main ones I was planning to play. Uh, it came out on uh, the PS Plus um, while I was on nights, so I had to, you know, I didn't get much chance to try it out then. I gave it a quick go see what it was about and then held it off until this week off um originally this game was going to come out for 70 pounds <laughs> uh and admittedly i think in the transition to moving it to a playstation plus freebie they um they took the sing some of the single player stuff that was going to be in the uh, presumably was originally going to be in the uh 70 pound retail bundle or whatever or package um and made it uh, an extra but i think even with that included the the fact that they were going to charge 70 quid for this bit of a stretch it's not a terrible game i enjoyed you know the little bits of it, but it's very um it's very thin it's uh, there's not a lot of depth to it uh i like to some extent the way that the cars drive although the fact that the um dashing and like uh, bashing maneuvers are mapped to the right stick means that you don't get camera control in the cars which plays a lot of, like a lot of havoc with my muscle memory um, I think if you play a lot more of it you probably get used to that obviously but it's fine I guess you know I know I, I can see why they did it that way but out of the cars you know half the game is supposed to be the, the on foot portion and I don't really think there's anything much to the on foot um, you have your breaker ability you're like super ultimate and your uh, there's like a, a dash punch type thing um, but basically every ability is on a cooldown the cooldown on the breaker is obviously quite long and you need to pick, do things to fill up the meter so uh, if you're on foot you can collect these like little things, shards, I think they're called, um, and that'll fill the meter up, or um, I think whilst you're, you know, running around performing tasks like bashing cars and whatever, that fills it up as well. One thing I've noticed is the breakers for some of the characters, or a lot of the characters, tend to be the same for the on foot and for the car, so you can also build up your meter to call it a hero car, which is that character specific car rather than the, the just generic one that you uh, jump into in the arena. <laughs> Vehicle in uh, several of the cars have basically the same ability as the person who drives them. So you're basically doing a, a, either an on-foot or a, a in-car version of the same thing. Like this one where um, I think she, she runs around and leaves trails of fire behind her which to actually drive through and the car does the same thing. 
Uh, a few of them are different. You know, there's one where like the car uh, becomes more aggressive at the front and does da instant damage if you touch it. Uh, and I think his breaker is like drawing mines or something. Um, so there's some differences there, but a lot of them it's the same thing either way. Uh, I just find the on foot stuff to be generally quite uh, weak. Um, the parkour that's supposed to be required of it is fairly limited and a l it doesn't flow terribly well, I don't think. Um, there's wall running, but it's, it's not, it doesn't have that slick Titanfall 2 wall running, you know, parkour mentality. It's very mechanical and video gamey. Uh, it's not bad. I'm not, you know, the game's not terrible. Uh, it's just, there's not a lot of depth to it for me. It doesn't have enough things for you to do at any given time. Um, with having, you know, even the punch when you're on the foot, uh, on foot even, uh, on a cooldown. So it's sure a cooldown, but it's still a cooldown. Um, means that you, you don't really have much to do a lot of the time. Most of the time if I was on foot, I was just trying to find a car. There are a couple of modes where you need to, I, should, I think maybe only one of them where you need to be on foot sometimes. And another one forces you onto foot. Uh, the one where you you need to go on foot is one of the two um, sort of objective based modes, um, which requires you to hit people and break, you know smash up their cars with your car uh, to generate these gears, which you then have to hop out of your car and pick up. But it's really not very satisfying. You can only pick up like four of them, but it drops like I think, 12 or something. It's way more than you could pick up. So you only pick up four at a time and then you have to go and deposit them. And it just feels bad being out of the cars a lot of the time. And, and you, you, it doesn't feel like you're doing much. You get much I see what they're going for, but I don't think it's executed very well. Uh, I was more interested in that mode in theory, but then when I played it and you know, um, the main destruction derby mode seems to be the one everyone's going for. Over the just smash up cars. Simple. It's got the same feel as deathmatch. You know, first person shooter. It's fine. Um, if you really like more objective stuff, for me the better one is uh, Carnado, um, which you generate the gears automatically with, and you collect them automatically when you smash into other people. You don't have to get out of the car to pick them up. They just get assigned to you, you get points, uh, and you can build up more and more and more. So um, instead of, you know, only being able to pick up four at a time, you can pick up, I think I've seen as high as 30 before I've cashed in, but I, I think you can possibly go higher than that even. Um, and with that one, you then, once you have decided you want to bank your points, because maybe your car's going to love whatever, you have to drive the car you're in through the Coronado, which is what it sounds like. It's a tornado um, of cars and it, explodes and then you're on foot and then you have to go find another car and start generating more points that one's a bit better uh, they both seem like kind of like gambit from destiny but they have different restrictions and emphasis on different places um i know it's you're all in the same arena rather than uh pve with occasional invasions it's um it's fine but there's just, there's it's very there's not a lot of content going you know um with only the four modes, there's only a few maps. I don't know exactly how many there are because it doesn't really expose that to you because you're just going into matchmaking. Um, but even, there's not that much difference between them from, from in my experience other than based on what the game type is. Uh, so the other game type that I didn't mention is Gridfall, which is the most different um, and it has you all the all again, but in that one, it's about eliminations. You have, re you have a set number of lives. You can earn more by, you know, collecting them in the arena or uh, by eliminating other opponents and taking theirs. Um, and it's basically last one standing. And and as part of that, the parts of the floor of the arena are falling away. And so then you might, you know, drop into the abyss, and that will lose your life or eliminate you if you've gone on left or whatever. Uh, so we yeah, with only those four modes. Not that much variety in terms of the, the, the maps other than based on what you're doing. Uh, yeah, it's fine for, for a PS Plus freebie. It's, it's a decent enough game. But I couldn't see myself getting into it for very long. And I certainly don't understand how they ever thought they could charge 70 quid for it. Even with the single player stuff that is now relegated to a, a paid add-on type situation. I don't know what they were thinking. Uh, but I can see why they... 
didn't do that ultimately and moved to this model because it wouldn't have flown if you ask me um i'm not sure how well it's doing either because the most recent time i tried to play it i wanted to play the multiplayer again and um it seemed to be telling me there was nobody online the player population thing said zero on all the servers i tried europe north america all of them zero I don't really think that can possibly be true. Uh, it was admittedly the morning in Europe when I tried it, which is why I wasn't that surprised to have to try the North America or Japan. Server. But when they were empty as well, I was like, this seems like it's probably a networking thing. Um, but sure enough, I wasn't able to find matches. So go figure. Um, I have to assume it's actually doing slightly better than that. And that was just a weird networking thing. But yeah, I mean, I haven't really heard that many people talking about it. So I don't think it's like blown up the way Rocket League or um, Among Us or Fall Guys did. Put it that way. Ten seconds now. So after that, the other one I was looking at was Control, which also got added to PS Plus. Um, so this is Control Ultimate Edition, the PS5 version, uh, which has you know the fancier graphics, the better frame rate, whatever. Um, I never, I was never particularly sold on this game to begin with, back when it was new. Um, nothing against it; it just didn't hook me that much uh, as, as a concept. But a lot of people I know were you know super impressed by it liked it a lot uh so i dove in there gave that a try um I'm, i did wind up changing from um the ray tracing mode to the performance mode for better frame rate based on something i heard um daniel dwyer saying on the giant bomb cast about him having preferred it when he made that switch and it did i i wasn't even consciously aware i think when i first played it using the ray tracing mode of what he was talking about with the it just feels a little bit stiff um but when i changed it it did feel better uh the the shooting the combat just felt a little bit more slick so the, the higher frame rate definitely helped in that regard um it may just it probably just was a case of the input latency being superior and therefore feeling crisper and better um I'm still not super far into it. Um, I did, uh, well, I did d get into a, a fairly lengthy session, and then it crashed, and then I was just like, can't be bothered going back in and seeing where it's down to be back to. Uh, I can't. I don't think it will have lost that much progress, but um, I had just gotten into a part where I was starting to get quite into it, and I was just like, I don't want to. It's it stole the momentum basically, uh, so I moved off of it. Um, I like, but you know, it looks nice. Um, the story is kind of interesting. I do like, I see the appeal, for sure. But, uh, yeah, it it doesn't have its hooks into me massively, but I'll probably go back to it at some point. You got the job. It's place for congratulations. Yippee, Satana. It happened in the last drop. I truly need an assistant. Funny thing is, I've been a janitor. I'm more at home in that role than as the director. Only Ati here seems to see that. Beyond those two, uh, I did go back to some old favorites. Um, I, the new season of Destiny launched. That's right, Destiny 2, to be specific. Um, season of the chosen uh, and part of that was they were bringing back the uh, devil's layer strike from uh, destiny one i didn't realize that they'd screwed up a little bit and that in order to play it this week you had to do it in the nightfall um so when i initially logged in and couldn't find it after doing the intro stuff for the season um, i was a bit confused looked it up and saw that it was the nightfall and i was a little bit underpowered for the nightfall so that first session i just sort of walked away um but then i came back again did some more work powered up a bit and i was able to I mean, I probably could have done that. I wasn't that far below, but I don't... I didn't really want to bother 
going in there and then like screwing up some other people's match made run um, by being too low power to be helpful. Uh, but yeah, once I was off the right power level, sailed through it. Devil's Lair is still a great strike. Um, so probably my favorite. I also tried out um, a big fan of Gambit. I don't really like a lot of the changes they made with the uh, version of Gambit in Beyond Light. Um, I think I call it like uh, Gambit Blitz. Or you might call it speed gambit, I guess. But I call it kind of blitz because it kind of reminds me of uh, like those like faster versions of puzzle games that you saw on mobile devices and on Facebook, where you know Bejewel Blitz, uh, Tetris Blitz, that sort of thing, where it's the fundamentals of the core game, but they've made everything go about must go fast, must go fast, must go fast, and that's kind of what the new gambit feels like to me. Um, Whereas I kind of preferred some of the more methodical, like, big play stuff in the uh, older variants, but it still mostly has the same appeal to me. Uh, they've made some changes to the netcode, I think, for the picking up of moats uh, in the arena, which uh, they're calling improvements. I've seen some people say they actually think it's worse than it's ever been. I don't know that I agree with either of those. It definitely feels different to me, uh, the moat pickup. But I don't know if it's better or worse. Um, it doesn't seem to be consistently one or the other. Sometimes it feels worse, sometimes it feels better. Uh, it feels more consistent in that I can usually more readily predict what's going to happen. But it's still not working properly. There are still definitely times where like someone behind you seems to pick up the moats that you should have picked up. There are times where I seem to pick up moats and I don't know why I picked them up. Um, because I wasn't actually touching them uh and these are things that did happen before as i say and they're less common now but the way I know, less probably isn't even right it just seems like it's more consistent why it happens wrong or the way it happens wrong whereas before it would happen wrong in any number of ways that you know completely without any correlation uh so it, it's different i don't think it's improved necessarily uh, but it, it, you know, I got some decent wins out of it. It's still Gambit. It's mostly fine. Played some Crucible. Still feels like Crucible. The state stuff still feels overpowered. Go figure. And I tried out the seasonal stuff with the um, sort of intro mission. I haven't actually bought the season pass at this point. Uh, so I can't go back into the Battlegrounds thing after having been taught it. But I might pick that up at some point and see some more of it. That seemed fine. Uh, big wave based arena thing you know I don't understand why Bungie are so reluctant to have like a proper wave based survival mode in Destiny and they just keep making these like almost horde modes almost wave based survival modes where there's always like some weird limitation or whatever but for the most part it seemed fun enough week I turned the field of view all the way up to 105. I had moved it up to 95 when the PS5 update came out which felt better uh, particularly with my submachine gun so I'd originally avoided going max because I wasn't really used to the to wild field of view so I didn't want to like overdo it so with that but having gotten used to the 95 I think it was better I was like I might as well try going all the way out and yeah it's I've got no issues with it and it's definitely helped my like some of my weapons feel more st stable and yeah it's good it looks good plays good it's interesting because uh i have transgressive steps on for extra agility on my warlock and also reloads my weapons when i run uh, and the 60 frames per second and now the wider field of view when i'm sprinting it sometimes feels like i'm traveling through time now it's so smooth and fast and it i love it like i'll be going through areas like corridors and then just like I also I use Top Tree Dawnblade because I like enhanced mobility. That's the other reason I wound up using transversive steps in the end. So I'm often in the air flying around, um, and it, it's it's so great. I love the mobility. Uh, 
it's one of the reasons I hate having to use stasis a lot um, because it means I can't use my dashes and I can't use my guns in the air. It's just, I want to use my subclass. Stop making me use other subclasses, Bungie. Stop it. Stop it right now. You fight till there's nothing left. I could use someone like you on my next crew. Anyway, uh, last thing I played was some more Formula One 2020. Um, I also watched the Virtual Grand Prix um, at the end of the week there, and uh, George Russell completely killing it again. Amazing. Um, those guys, like, like him, and you know, obviously the esports pros are. So good at that game. I'm not nearly that good. Not nearly that good. But I have fun with the uh, the career stuff. Particularly in F1 2020, I love my team. So I think a lot of people are... That's the main thing for them. And it's a lot of fun. Um, you know, they've, uh, they've made some improvements to it. Um, I, I think they had done this the last time I was... Uh, I checked back in. Uh, one of the patches at some point changed the customization so that you could see the... Uh, the number of va numeric values of the um, colors that you were setting, which makes it easier to match them between like your car and your race suit, your helmet, your uh, your team colors, or whatever. You can you can directly copy from the car and the team colors, which is handy. Uh, but for the rest of them, like it's nice to be able to see the numbers and match them all up. So I did go through it at one point, and I've now made sure that the exact color values of all my stuff are matched up. So everything looks good. Uh, ran a few races, won the Drivers' Championship for the first time. Um, so I've now moved on to the next season to try and win the Constructors. Uh, teammate still Mick Schumacher because the game rather silly in that um, the contract period runs out before the end of the season, which means that you're about to get a lot of money, but um, you have to sign the Drivers' contracts before that. So I didn't have quite enough cash on hand to buy out um, Danny Ricardo's contract, which is what I wanted to do. Um, having a, I, I brought Mick into the sport, but I wanted to sell this constructor style. It'd be a lot easier with a an elite F1 driver than uh, a trained F2 driver. Uh, but it wouldn't let me because I didn't quite have enough cash. It was like a couple of million short on his buyout. Um, so I'd have to wait until the middle of the following season make sure I have the cash on hand and do it. It's odd to me that it happens like right before your end of season payments. It's it's strange. Um, but you know, it's fine. We'll get there, I'll get, I'll get Dan in my car and everything will be fine. But yeah, F1 2020 is a great game. Um, I know some people don't like, it's not as true sim as some of the other racing games out there. Um, but for me, you know, it's trying to fill for us F1 fans the same sort of area as, you know, Madden or FIFA for NFL or uh, Association football fans. Obviously, motorsport is a little bit more technical in that regard as a simulation because obviously if you're playing football, either of kind, um, with a controller, there's like, there's very little direct mapping of what you're doing to what would be done in real life. Whereas... With racing games, obviously, if you get a wheel, pedal, you can get very close to the physical act, um, other than the exertion required uh, of racing. So it it does push more in that sim direction than those games would. But I think they, personally, I think they do a good job balancing those interests at Cody's. I think it's terrifying that they've been acquired by EA and we may now face the prospect of things like the podium pass and whatever being expanded and uh, I think it could go real bad real fast basically but at the moment F1 2020 is a good game 
uh, and I, and yeah, I, I got some fun races in. I like developing the cars. Yeah, it's fun. It, it's good. Virtual safety car is ending. Maintain your pace until the green flag. VSC ending. Wait for green. Okay, clear. But yeah, that was my week. Um, bit of bit of, bit of bit of cars, bit of bit of shoot, bit of magic powers. Um, watching community. Pretty quiet. All things considered, um, not what I was planning, not the week I was planning, but you know, it's lockdown. It's the UK. The weather's unpredictable. We roll with the punches. But like I say, it does look like um, into this week of nights and then into the week off after, uh, it's going to start warming up again. We're looking at temperatures during the day in the teens, as opposed to like some of the some of most of this week. You know, daytime temperatures were like sub zero, so that was. You know, the idea of like spending a bunch of time outside was just completely ridiculous. But now I should be able, after I get through these nights, my next night week off, I should be able to do more of the outdoor stuff with the, the pocket that I was planning to do, as opposed to what this video turned out being, which is a few clips from the pocket and then just a bunch of recordings from the PS5. There was going to be some of that, but I didn't plan on it being most of this video. But you know, it's it's it's, it's it's the weekly vlogs, man. They're just get they're just gonna be like, however the, the however it goes, whatever happens. Also, I mean, don't expect them necessarily like absolutely every week. I'm not crazy. If nothing happens, there probably won't be much point of it. But the weekly vlogs are like of a week. I want to do them every week, but you know. If I have a week where like all I'm doing is like sitting around doing nothing and there's nothing to show, I won't bore you with that. We'll do something else. But yeah, the weekly vlogs are hopefully going to continue. And as you can see from this one, the format might change up. So, you know, if you would prefer that I never do one like this again, drop a comment and let me know. Or if you thought this was cool and you want to see more video game stuff, say that too. Uh, if, if you liked the video, I'd appreciate a like. Subscribe if you haven't. Everything helps in this crazy YouTube world. And here, once again, is the truth about how YouTubers operate. Uh, it's a three-pronged attack. Subliminal, liminal, and superliminal. Superliminal? I'll show you. <laughs> hey, you! Like and subscribe! Uh, yeah, alright. I'm in.